Welcome to Media Space Members Daily. We bring you exclusive interviews from our leadership group and other professional influencers within the media, marketing, gov, tech community globally. Today I have with me James Rosewell, CEO and co-founder of 51 Degrees, which uses its software to help developers create responsive mobile websites to maximize customers' web experience. Hi James, how are you? Very well, thank you. Nice to meet you today. Good to meet you too. What are the current challenges in data-driven marketing? Well, I think it's very confusing for everyone uh, at the moment. Uh, there isn't a great deal of clarity around what's going to happen next. Um, on one hand, you have the IAB's sort of project REARC, which uh, appears to be focusing on identity-based uh, marketing solutions, the sort of solutions where whenever you visit a publisher's website or you go to a brand website, you would enter an email address or some other piece of personal information. I think that's uh, likely to be clunky. That needs to be improved. Uh, if you look at uh, what Google are proposing in the realms of the W3C, for example, which is the forum they've directed people to talk to, uh, there's solutions around cohort-based marketing um, that also remove a lot of use cases. Um, so that is confusing as well. They're, every week there are an increasing number of bird-related acronyms uh, for those of us that follow it in detail to get our heads around. Um, so I think for the, you know, the average industry participants, it's extremely confusing uh, at the moment. And I welcome Mark Pritchard's uh, call last week um, to focus on September 21, 21 to uh, have uh, you know a working uh, prototype and that really means we need to get clarity over the next uh, three months. Uh, I am concerned uh, that there's a it's just not joined up at the moment uh, that you know the, the conversation the solution are we going to end up with um, an almost exponential increase exponentially increasing number of different solutions and platforms that uh, we need to support on the on the web uh, that's not really the vision of the open web. If you have to support Apple differently to uh, Google and then within each of those sectors, you've got different approaches depending on, uh, you know, how publishers and advertisers uh, want to work. Um, sounds like a job creation program. We'll all be needing hundreds and hundreds of extra engineers. Um, I'm not sure that's going to bring efficiency or any of the things that Mark Pritchard or publishers are looking for in terms of uh, revenue or return on investment. So I think the onus is to for the uh, people who have technology suppliers uh, or are members of industry trade bodies is to lean in, um, take an active role in this debate and demand um, some clarity. Um, but ultimately the solutions I'm seeing uh, really, I can't, I can't see how they're going to work. They're either not going to work in practice because people are just not going to enter this sort of information uh, or they, um, uh, requires substantial changes in the way that a web browser works and the relationship that it has with its users. Um, and ultimately, for me, this isn't really about privacy or the things that uh, Google and Apple um, in particular sort of talk about. It's really about who gets to do what with whom. Um, and for that reason, I think it's absolutely right that the competition authorities are involved. Um, and I think uh, some of these solutions uh, are in danger of uh, over the next year of effectively uh, heightening the walls of the walled gardens, uh, particularly Google's, so that they're so high they are forever insurmountable. And if a regulator, be it the DOJ or the European Commission or the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, um, does uh, get involved and implement the remedies that they're talking about or have put in their reports, um, by the time they do so, it'll all be rather too late. Um, so uh, I think there is a crunch point. Um, I understand it's confusing to people. I hope I've outlined the different uh, dimensions for you and, you, and the uh, listeners and watchers. Um, but now's the time to lean in, get involved um, and uh, demand uh, some clarity. And uh, I hope that over the next six to eight weeks, um, a solution will appear um, that actually uh, does not have some of the deficiencies I mentioned earlier, but uh, we'll see. What are the opportunities for data-driven marketing? Well, I, I see a lot of um, uh, companies and organizations looking at sort of contextual or this sort of first party data uh, side of things. I'm concerned that um, all these solutions lack uh, services and features that we've become used to reporting, attribution, frequency capping, measurement, um, all, all important aspects, I think, to marketers. Um, and none of those solutions um, actually support those sorts of use cases. 
Um, so we sort of, you know, the, the personalization marketing story in digital has been running for well over 20 years now. Um, it seems a bit difficult to sort of put the genie back in the bottle. Um, we need those, those sort of, you know, use cases. All marketers have to accept that they need to, to abandon them. So I think, you know, there's some choice. Do you, do you have on one hand a view that these use cases can be maintained, that uh, uh, the geeks and the policy folks and the legal people are going to come up with a solution that's going to support them or not? I think it's a bit early to call it one way or another. Um, so my view would be to um, advocate, as I said earlier on in the interview, uh, working with suppliers trying to understand more about uh, what's happening but don't go uh, on any particular solution uh, at, at the moment. Um, I realise that might be controversial and it is uncomfortable um, but uh, there's certainly a lack of clarity and I think jumping too early um, is as bad as jumping too late. What advice do you have to give in this new normal? I guess there's two new normals. Aren't there? There's the chaos of the industry that uh, we're in at the moment. Um, and in, in that regard, uh, you know, I reiterate the need to, to lean in. You know, if you're not sure, uh, you know, what that means, look at joining the W3C. Uh, contact me if you like via LinkedIn and I'll uh, do my best to point you in the right direction, um, depending on, you know, what, what your concerns are. Um, talk to people, um, particularly at the moment, if you've got a you know, contact with Google, for example, um, ask them uh, what level of consensus and industry alignment is needed before they make these changes. Yeah, I'm certainly not clear and I'm very um, heavily involved in, in these sorts of things. So um, from the industry uh, side of things, which I think is all I'm qualified to talk about, I think that's the, that's the advice. On the COVID side of things, I really know nothing more than the, the barest glimpse of the headlines in the newspaper and you know that's confusing I think you know from my point we're following um, the government advice we're trying to strike a balance um, and just trying to stay safe which seems to be you know follow the hygiene rules um, be sensible um, and let's uh, let's hope you know the doctors and the researchers uh, will come up with a solution but uh, in the meantime we can only focus on the things we know and that we're skilled to deal with. Thank you, James, for joining us and for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Stay tuned for the next episode of Mediaspace Members Daily. In the meantime, connect with us at mediaspace.global.